Krishna. I'm Rajarshi Das. Welcome to Hare Krishna today. On today's program, we're going to continue lessons from the Bhagavad Gita. God walks his talk. Yes, in our previous program, we were discussing Lord Krishna's declarations in the Bhagavad Gita, how he gave the knowledge of himself and the soul and the science to the sun god Vivashvan. He gave it to Manu. Arjuna inquired about Krishna's being able to give things in the beginning of creation. Krishna revealed his identity. He says, I am on born. My spiritual body never deteriorates. I am the Lord of all sentient beings. I appear in this world millennium after millennium. Then we discuss his declaration. I am the source of everything material and spiritual. Everything emanates from me and the wise who knows this perfectly, engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their heart. And Krishna further said, I, those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give them the understanding whereby they can come to me. He says, I am seated within the heart. I'll destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge all the darkness born of ignorance. So, Krishna made all his declarations. But after this, Arjuna said, Krishna, I want to see how you have entered into this nature. I would like to get some ideas. So Arjuna, in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna says to Krishna, Vaktum arhashya she shena divyahi atma vibhutayaha yavir vibhuti bhir Yabhir vibhuti bhir lokan imangstvam vyapi tishtasi. Tell me in detail of your divine opulence by which you pervade all these worlds. So Arjuna is telling Krishna, you please, you, if you can please tell me in detail. And then Krishna says, Katham vidyamaham yogim stvam sada parichintayan kishu kishu chabhaveshu chintyu si bhagavan maya. O Krishna, O supreme mystic, how shall I constantly think of you? And how shall I know you? In what various forms are you to be remembered? O supreme personality of Godhead. So, after Arjuna made his request, he said, Vishtarena atmano yogam vibhutim cha janardana bhuyo kathaya triptirhi shinvatu nashti me mritam. O Janardan, again please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences. I am never satiated in hearing about you, for the more I hear, the more I want to taste the nectar of your words. And then Krishna replied to Arjuna. He said, Shri Bhagavan Vacha Hantate Katha Ishyami Divya Hyatma Vibhutaya Pradhanyataha Kuru Srishta Nashtiyanto Vishtarasyami. The Supreme Personality of God had said, Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjuna. For my opulence is limitless. So it's important Arjuna is saying, please tell me of your opulence in detail. But Krishna said, that is not possible Arjuna. My glories, my opulences are unlimited. I would tell you simply of those that are most prominent. So then Krishna goes on to describe the great manifestations in this world of the luminous bodies, I am the sun, of the bodies of water, I am the ocean, 
of whatever grade. He says, Yad Yad Vibhuti Mat Satvang Srimad Urjitam Evava Tattar Evava Gachatvang Mamate Joang Sasambhava He said, whatever mighty, whatever glorious, whatever beautiful thing you see within this world, he says, Mamate Jo Ang Sasambhava It is just a fragment of myself. He said, Arjun, what need is there for all this detailed knowledge? He says, Ek angstena stito jagat with a single fragment of myself. I pervade and support this entire universe. And brave Arjuna said, Krishna, I would like to see how you have entered into this cosmic manifestation, how you are sustaining everything, how this whole manifestation is yourself. I'd like to see how you have entered into this manifestation. And Krishna said, okay, Arjun, I'll show you, I'll reveal to you. But you cannot see this with your present eyes. Divyam, the Dami Te Chakshu, I'll give you divine eyes by which you would be able to behold this form of mine. He said, Arjun, you behold at once everything in the universe, everything from the past, the present, the future, everything you behold at once in this form. This form encompasses everything in the universe. And then, right there on the battlefield, Arjuna, behold that majestic. Sanjay describes, if millions of suns were to rise up at once into the sky, it may resemble something. It may look something like that universal form that Krishna, dis uh, that Krishna revealed to Arjuna. So the point is, Krishna is not just talking. He's not just talking. I am this, I am that, I do this, I do that. No. God walks his talk. He demonstrates his power, his glory, his ability. And this creates faith because after all, Krishna is saying that the purpose of his giving the message of the Bhagavad Gita, all this knowledge is to take us, the souls, out of illusion, out of the bondage of repeated birth, disease, old age and death, to free us from the spell of Maya. He says, Tribir guna mair bhavi rebhi sarvamidang jagat mohitang nabijanati mamebhya paramavyam. He said that the whole world is deluded by this maya, this illusion. <clears throat> and the result of this, he says, Mohitang na avijanati. Because of this moha, because of this illusion, the souls do not know me. So he says to Arjuna, this divine energy of mind, this maya, consisting of the three modes, goodness, passion, and ignorance, is duratya, it is very difficult to overcome. He says, But mameva ye prapadyante mayametam tarantite. But those who surrender unto me, they can easily cross beyond this. So this is the goal, this is the purpose. That all the knowledge that we acquire all the information that the Lord gives it is meant to inspire us our thoughts words and actions to be aligned to him his service what is sin any thought word or action that is for our own sense gratification that is sinful it may be small sin it may be big sin but it is sinful so Krishna wants that we learn the science of being situated constitutionally. So he says, all souls in this world, Mama, Eva, Angsa, they are my eternal fragmental parts. They all belong to me. Yes. 
But right now, Manahasha Stani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati. But right now, the souls are struggling in this world with the six senses that includes the mind. The souls are just struggling in this world. So Krishna is saying, surrender on to me. Mameva ye prapadyanti. He said, this Maya, Duratya, it is very difficult. The whole world, people are trying to combat the material energy, the problems of this world in various ways. Yes, scientists, philosophers, they're coming up with so many. This means, that means trying to figure out. But that is described as trying to cross the ocean by holding on to the tail of a dog. That's not good enough to take you across the ocean. No doubt dog could swim. But you can't cross the ocean by holding on to the tail of a dog. Whatever mundane, whatever material ability we have in this world, know for a fact it is not good enough to take us across this ocean of repeated birth, disease, old age and death. Yes. All our expertise in whatever field of science and technology and whatever we may excel in, these things meet their perfection when they are utilized in the service of God. Yes. So when we know God and when we know our relationship with Him, then whatever material things we are accumulating and acquiring they compare to zeros. If you have one zero, two zero, three zero, any amount of zero, the value of it is zero. But if you put one in front of it, it may become millions. Well, that is God. Because God is the source of ourselves and the source of everything. So when we understand the science, of linking up with God, our source, and acting in relation to Him. That's like these hands, acting for the interest and in relation to the body. If these hands act independent from the body, if these hands just decide, look, we're only serving this body, mouth only eating, we're not going to do that. We're going on strike. We're going to take the food ourselves. So two hands in the food, just trying to eat the food, no business. The hands cannot be nourished by eating the food itself. But if the hands simply feed the stomach, then the hands will be nourished, the entire body will be nourished. We, being parts and parcels of God, we are meant to function in relation to God. And as soon as we turn away from Him and we come to this world, then we have entered under the spell of Maya and the result simply birth, disease, old age and death repeatedly in this world. So whatever expertise we develop within this world without turning to God and hearing from Him in the Bhagavad Gita, learning the science as He is describing, if we don't enter into that eternal relationship, then we're going to remain conditioned in this material world experiencing the problems of birth, disease, old age and death repeatedly. So when we say God walks His talk, He demonstrates. If He's saying to us in the Gita what to do for thoughts, words, actions, everything. Krishna is giving us guidance in the Bhagavad Gita. For thoughts, He's saying, always think of me. He said, Arjun, I'm telling you the most confidential part of all knowledge. Man mana bhava, mad bhakto, mad yajimang, namaskuru. You just always think of me. Become my devotee. Worship me. You offer your homage unto me and surely you will come to me. I promise you this because you're my very dear friend. Words. Satatam kirita yanto mang. He says, you always chant my glories. He's expecting us with our words. He says, those who preach my glories, there's no one in this world more dear to me. And never will there be one more dear to me. So we're expected to utilize our words for enlightening or representing him by representing what he has given. His words for the deliverance and the enlightenment 
of souls in this world. But our actions, every day we have to act. So everything, even basic things, we have to eat. Krishna is saying, Yagya shishta shina santa mujyante sarva kilbishai bhunjate te tua ghampapa ye pachanti atma karanat. He said, My devotees are released from all kinds of sin because they prepare food, offering it first in sacrifice. Everything is owned and controlled by God. Sacrifice means how to say thanks by offering it, by acknowledging that we are part of Him, everything comes from Him, and how we should express gratitude towards Him. So actions, even in basic things like preparing food, He says, you have to learn Yagya Shishta, how to prepare food with love and devotion, offering it first and sacrifice to me, and we are released from all kinds of sin. He said, but those who prepare food for their own sense enjoyment, they eat sin at every mouthful. This is the science God is revealing personally in Bhagavad Gita, what we should do, what we shouldn't do. He further says, Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhaktiya prayachati. Someone may say, but I am a poor man. I don't have anything much. You don't need he said, you may bhaktiya prayachati. You offer with love and devotion a leaf, a fruit, a flower, water. He said, Ashnami, I would accept. Because you're offering with love and devotion. Yes. So the Lord is giving us detailed information in Bhagavad Gita how we can perfect our lives. He's saying about our actions, yet karoshi, yet ashnashi, yet jahoshi dadas, yet whatever you do in your life, mad arpan. You do it as an offering unto me. Everyone, we have to work. But Krishna says, chetasa sarva karmani mai sanyasya mat paraha. Buddhi yoga mupashritya machita satatang bhava. He said, in all activities, you just depend upon me. You work always under my protection. In such devotional service, you be fully conscious of me. Yes, chitasa sarva karmani, all your work. Because work done as a sacrifice to him must be performed. Otherwise, work causes bondage in this world. Every action produces a reaction, a binding result. So he is saying, while you are doing your work, learn the science, how to do it as an offering unto me. And he is giving the details in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, while doing this, you be fully conscious of me. Then he says, machita sarva durgani. Machita means, if you become conscious of me. Then what? Sarva Durgani, we have described this world as Dukhalayam, Ashashvatam, as full of miseries, full of suffering. That's the nature of this world, Dukhalayam, and Ashashvatam. If you someone say, that's all right, I'll tolerate the bad with the good, Ashashvatam, you won't be able to stay, death will come, we'll be kicked out. So Krishna is saying that you would be able to cross over all the obstacles of this world, mat prasada tarishasi. Mat prasada means by my grace. Yes, you'll be able to cross over all the obstacles, all the problems of this world by my grace. Yes, but Krishna wants. But na shroshasi, if you don't hear from me, Bhagavad Gita means the song of God. God is giving Raja Vidya. The king of all education, the topmost message. So he's saying, Na shroshas, if you don't hear from me, but a hunkar, you just act out a false ego, thinking you are powerful and you are great and you are strong and you are learned. If you just act out a false ego, not hearing me, you'll be lost in the cycle of birth and death. So for our own good and our own deliverance, the Lord is giving this detailed information in the Bhagavad Gita. He wants us, out of great love, out of great compassion for us. We are His children. All souls. He says, Aham Bija Pradapita. I am the seed-giving Father. Yes, not one of the people. He says, All souls.
soul who is in this world, I am the seed giving father. Yes. So just as if a, if a father is comfortable at home, but his son is in jail, his son is not eating properly, he is miserable in jail, then the father is not happy. So the Supreme Lord doesn't like us, his eternal children, to be in a miserable condition in this temporary miserable material world. Therefore that's why he comes to this world and he gives his immortal words, the Bhagavad Gita, the science of God, the science of the soul and the soul's relationship with God. Yes. So when we understand this eternal relationship with the Lord, then we're able to act in such a way that we'll become free from bondage of this world. Because in religion you always hear people speaking about freedom, emancipation, salvation, moksha. But freedom from what? Freedom implies that you are bound, you are confined. So what are you bound by? If you don't know what you're bound by, then what are you going to become free from? So until and unless we hear from Bhagavad Gita how the souls are bound by these three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance, these different qualities bind us, they influence us to act this way, that way, and every action produces a reaction that binds us. So Krishna's solution you surrender on to me and aham tuang sarva pap. I'll free you from all sins. Ma shuchaha, don't worry, have no fear. That's Krishna's purpose. You just surrender on to me and aham tuang sarva pap. I'll exempt you, I'll free you from all sins. Ma shuchaha, don't worry, don't fear. So Bhagavad Gita is the complete science of God. God himself is giving knowledge of himself, what we should do, what we should not do. So human life really begins with this awakening. Who am I? Where have I come from? Why am I here? Why am I suffering in this world? Where am I going after death? Who is God? What's my duty towards God? This is real awakening. If we do not come about to this awakening, then the valuable human's form of life is wasted simply in eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. And that's the same activities that the animals do. So Lord Rishabhadev, he is saying, what the human being should do. He says of all souls that have received material bodies in this world, the souls that have a human form should not labor hard day and night just like the dogs and hogs, just for something to eat, some sex and some base, base activities. He says, Tapo Divyam, we should be bold and brave, perform divine austerity to get spiritual happiness. Brahma Sukha to anantam, spiritual happiness that is unending. We say no pain, no gain. So even to get something on a material level, we have to endeavor very hard. We have to put out a lot of labor, a lot of energy to get success, material success. What to speak of wanting to get eternal life? What to speak about we want to realize I am not the temporary miserable body. I want to realize I am the eternal soul. If we want to bring about eternal happiness, we have to be willing to regulate the senses of the body and engage our thoughts, words, and activities in the Supreme Lord as He is directing and prescribing in the Bhagavad Gita. And in this way, we are going to bring about complete perfection, complete happiness. So Lord Krishna's teachings in the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita means the song of God. So 5,000 years ago when Lord Krishna came to this earth planet, then he performed many wonderful superhuman activities for 125 years on the earth planet. But very significant, during this period, he delivered the greatest wisdom known to man, his message, the Bhagavad Gita. So the day Bhagavad Gita Jayanti is the anniversary of Lord Krishna's delivering the message of the Bhagavad Gita to us in this world. So these, the series of programs, lessons from the Bhagavad Gita had been in order to honor Lord Krishna's deliverance to us of the message of Bhagavad Gita. 
I'm Rajarshi Das saying Hare Krishna and do join us again next week for another program. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna promises that whoever perfectly and constantly meditates on Him will ultimately come to Him. This is the highest evolution of the liberated soul, direct relationship with Krishna in His own planet. This is Goloka, the spiritual realm. Here in Krishna's abode, all water is nectar, every word is a song, and every step a dance. Far from formless, the spiritual world is the origin of all forms emanating from the supreme form, Krishna. All forms here are eternal, fully conscious, and blissful. Krishna is the original form, and the human form is the reflection of that form. Here, standing on the bank of the Jamuna River, with the exquisitely beautiful Radha at his side, Krishna smiles and plays his enchanting flute. He appears as the central attractive figure, enjoying varieties of divine loving exchange with the whole spiritual world. Every entity in the spiritual world, regardless of its particular form, enjoys full loving reciprocation with Krishna. When the devotees, peacocks, swans, and all other living beings hear the sound of Krishna's transcendental flute, they swoon in ecstasy, and tears of love fall from their eyes. All souls are potentially capable of reaching this state of love of God, and Krishna promises to help those who long for it. Those souls who follow the path of bhakti yoga, devotional meditation, will at last evolve their original spiritual bodies. All of us are parts of the Supreme Soul Krishna, who is everlastingly beckoning us to return to His eternal abode. Ami Jamuna Pooline Kadamba Kanane Kihari <laughs> 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 <laughs>